Hello YouTube modeling community. Uh, this is Rusty Rotor. Uh, figure we'll do a little, uh, we got a couple stash ads. Uh, a surprise project. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be done on the side. Uh, the rest of the parts should be here by mid next week, end of next week. Uh, well, I'll take it back. One of the parts packs thing uh it'll be a couple weeks two three weeks before i get it uh and they tell you that up front which is really cool so you're not like oh where's my package you know type thing cheers i've cut myself down to one soda a day even though it's zero sugar uh one a day uh the rest of the time is is water or, or juice or something like that maybe a glass of tea uh, and that final push, guys, I've lost, let's see, I was, at my heaviest, I was 325, 320, 325, uh, I went down to 145, or 245, I'm sorry, uh, when I first got diagnosed with diabetes, uh, and then I've kind of spiked back up to, you know, around 280, 290, and I was like, ah, enough's enough. I'm not playing this game. Uh, so uh, I went back to see my doctor uh, on medicine. And I'm down to basically around two, between 248 and 250. Uh, so I've got about almost 30 pounds to go. So in a final push, it's time to push out, you know, toxins, bad stuff that I'm putting in my body that you know, you normally don't think about, so, yeah, enough about me, it's just kind of where I'm at, so, I'm feeling better, I feel lighter, uh, being diabetic, there's complications in that, I have a lot of spikes either way of, uh, my blood sugar, not too horrible here lately, we've, my doctor cut down my meds, so, that's good, uh, and it, I think my body's kind of balancing out now, so, you know, fingers crossed, uh, I'll have that, well, let's see, last time I was 20, 28, 29, 30, uh, when I had that body. I can't work out like I did back then, uh, just too many broken bones and pins and screws, it just keeps me from doing that. Uh, knees are shot, back shot, of course my left leg is shot, so uh, I'll be limited, I think uh, a lot of swimming will help. So get a little tone, tone, tone back up, get in that healthy mode. Uh, anyways, like I said, enough about me. Uh, today's Wednesday. Uh, I've, I've been super busy. Uh, you know, of course we're going into the summertime, so I'm going to be a lot more busy, less videos, uh, you know, grass cutting, all the outdoor stuff. So, uh, that's why we got a jump start on, especially Cecilia, because we knew, not gonna have as much shop time as what we had uh and this will be the last video we shoot from uh bench one uh i think this weekend uh is my plan to disassemble this desk down to the frame anyways uh then we'll cut the tabletop down narrower uh, and we're just gonna make it a shelf unit for up underneath the tv here to my right uh and probably I don't know about the length. I don't. Probably not as much as the length. We'll make it a little, a little shorter, uh, and, and then we may. It might work perfect. So, but all that back shelf will come off. Uh, the the sideboard here will come off, and then uh, we'll cut new top. We may even put like a middle shelf in underneath, and that's so we can our containers, whether they have model cars in them or diorama materials. They can all get stacked up on that shelf nice and neat, and I can label them. It keeps it organized, and yet it, like I said before, it opens up this space back to where I had furniture sitting in here, and I could just come in here and chill out, play a video game, turn out all the lights, take a nap, come down here and get a good book, and just sit back and read for, you know, hours, draw, color. I, I mean, I'm almost 60 years old. I still like to color. Now, I do the adult coloring books with the... the high-end, you know, color pencils and stuff like that. I, I like that kind of challenge of those small little areas and keeping it within the lines. And, you know, I've always been that way. 
So, yeah, last video shot from here. After this, the diorama table will be back. We'll add the lights from this bench to the diorama table to light it up more. And remember, we can work off the backside of the diorama table, too. It is. The table is three feet wide. So, uh, I could legitimately put, you know, four of these uh, mats, like I have on this table, on that desk. But if you remember, we got a uh, big organizer thing I got to put together. And... I think what we're going to do is we're going to shift that off to one side and then uh, that that allows my wife to sit at the back side to work on her projects when she has them and you know of course all my plunder and mess so that's that's the plans for that and where we're at uh, I will shoot pictures as I'm kind of disassembling stuff and reassembling them and we'll probably just have a slideshow on one of the videos at the end uh, where have I gotten with Shorty? Uh, we'll take a look here. Uh, I got the grill done, but I don't like it. So, uh, I did use the all-clad system, and it and I didn't clear-coat it, and it turned aluminum looking. So, I don't know if my all-clad was old or, or what. So, what we're going to do is we're going to sand the little the red part down again. Uh, we'll pop the little emblem off. And that emblem is courtesy of Ernest. Uh, you know, it's, it does say Ranger, but it's so small you can't make it out. But uh, we're going to hit this with Molotow. Uh, I, I like to finish on Molotow a lot better. And this is the Ultra Chrome from All Clad. And it just, it dulled only on the grill. I mean, everything else is okay. It looks real chromish. Uh, but the grill, I'm not, I'm not happy with the grill. So we're going to reshoot that. Then we'll redo our red line and then we'll get our emblem reattached. Redo our, uh, marker lights here. Uh, but as far as the look, you know, it's not in the vehicle or anything, but you can see there's the red line. So yeah, I mean, I'm happy with it. It's just not the right. I want it. His is very chrome and I want it to shine very much. Uh, in hindsight, I would have left the kit chrome on it. It would have really played the part, but the kit chrome was just a little too chromey, so to speak. Uh, also, Ernest, uh, you know, he made the emblems. I also made me some little air fresheners, and then I just came in and hand painted them, detail painted them, make them look like the real thing. Uh, so we got those done. Our knobs are all back on the dash now. We just got to get our decal made, which I already talked to Terry. He's making this decal for me. And then I'll get the dash decal in. And this will be ready to go in place. Well, we'll get the key in the ignition. And uh, then we'll get the air fresheners hung. I think the air fresheners hang from this knob right here. Uh, either that or the shifter, I can't remember. But uh, and that's the only detail we got left to put in there. And then our seat belts. Uh, it would have center seat belts. We're not full with that. We're just going to put driver's side and passenger side seat belts uh, and, and call it good. At least on our version. Uh, Ernest also made the license plate frame. Which I, th I, mean, I mean, you guys, I think I've already showed all the stuff, but just that. So we still got to get that one ready. Uh, we've got a rear view mirror. And a couple of little goodies in there. And then, uh, I've not got the engine married to the chassis yet. Uh, that is the next thing to make our, our connections with the hoses and wires that are on the engine right now. We'll get those to their final spots. Uh, and then like I said, it's, it's going to be putting it up. So I'm going to set aside probably tomorrow. Uh, we'll get that done. And then, uh, We will probably go ahead and pack it up, like I said, for a couple weeks. I want to concentrate on this uh, and the villain. Uh, I'm, I am I got to get all the washes on all the buildings. And then I can start installing the windows and the doors and the shutters. And then, uh, and, and that right there, guys, is probably a week to two weeks worth of work. And then I can start getting what rail I have on. Uh... 
and then start, we got to start running all the power and electric from the boxes, get those mounted. Ernest did a great job on those. Uh, I got them weathered up pretty good. They look nice. Uh, we're going to take a look at them here in a minute. And we got the fountain. Uh, it's done other than a little more grass added around the bottom. I did one little spot so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about when we get there. Uh, but the first part of the villain, which is Cecilia, the villain, the truck, uh, we've got our wood bed cut out. Now this is still rough. I'm just waiting for everything to dry. I got to clean up the inside of the bed rails from the white glue. And then uh, we got a lot of sanding to do. Get this all sanded good. We'll have to fill in with some little wood putty and uh, get it all sanded and then we'll black stain it. And then we can get our... Uh, Oh, what do you call it? Our toolbox built up here. And uh, I still need to figure out a hinge method for that. And then we've got... I think that's it. Uh, yeah, once we get it all stained and uh, we can put the bed rails in. I can look underneath and see where the bed rails are so I know approximately and I can measure. And then we'll... You know, we're only doing bed rails on the flat areas, not up on the the box area. But that'll all get sanded down and smooth, and then we'll we'll stain it. Uh, and then that'll have it look the part. But yeah, we got that far with that. And now we're open, so it sits down. Let me show you here. Get her around here. Now, mind you, I got tape on everything. See, it sits down where it's supposed to now. So we're back to plan A. And we got room underneath for our drive shaft. Uh, get her where she's supposed to be. You guys can kind of see. There we go. And you can see the gap underneath here. That'll be room enough to run the drive shaft to the engine and all that. And then our interior will sit a little higher than when our running boards are on. You won't see none of this. So all the right height is definitely figured out, planned out. Just got to let some stuff dry, and then we got a lot of sanding to do, and then we'll, we can start getting down to uh, running our LEDs, uh, getting all the black trim shined up like it's supposed to, uh, test our LEDs, of course, and then uh, this, this can get put to the side. I mean, steady. Uh, probably a week's worth of work is what I'd estimate. So I'd break that up to about a week and a half with the time that I want to have. Uh, we still got to run our hoses from the airbags uh, to the uh, where it'll come up into the uh, toolbox and go to the uh, all the equipment. And then, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, there's not a lot to the truck, guys. I'm, I apologize. It's not getting all my crazy detail in it. Uh, the detail is the truck itself, the bed inside the bed, and the LEDs. Uh, yes, it'll have an engine. Uh, it's had extra parts put in. It's not just kit, you know, st box stock. It's got uh, quite a few extra parts. Kit bash, basically. Uh, I do have a set of pulleys coming. My good friend Lee Barrett is in modeling. Uh, you guys haven't checked out his new video up on YouTube, just search it, uh, Zen Modeling. Uh, he's got a lot of how he did, uh, he's got a blower, I think it's an 871 blower. He lathed on a, a metal lathe uh, and all the components for the uh, front plate, the uh, rear plate, the pulleys, and the uh, actual blower unit. Uh, he made all that out of uh, brass stock and aluminum stock, and it's it's cool and it's 125 scale it's not you know anything bigger it's it's tiny stuff uh, and he's put a lot of time and process into learning the machine inside and out for one uh taking classes uh on machining and, and you know and knowing what what does what and how to do it and the measurements he said it's been a whole new learning curve from 3d printing which took us months to learn and then 
into a lathe like that. And, and he's got a full photo etch lab now in a, sh in a shop. So he'll be making photo etch. And it's mainly specifically going to be for like dragsters, funny cars, pro mods, stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, go check him out. Uh, give him a follow on Instagram if you're on Instagram. Give him a follow on uh, YouTube. He doesn't post a lot, but his videos are really good. And they're, some of them are very, you know, comical. Uh, he's just an overall, you know, good guy. And he does perfection modeling. Uh, that's the only way I can describe his, his style. It is perfection. He will take years to build a model to make sure that every little piece is as close to real looking and accurate as he can possibly do it. And if that means it takes a couple years to either develop it, design it, and start producing it, or, you know, gathering all the pieces he needs and, and making something that will do it, you know, type thing. But, uh, and he's, he's very, very willing to help somebody, uh, information wise. Uh, he's big in the club circuits. He knows the judges, have what they look for, what they don't look for. So he's very informative all the way around. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a, uh, a true, uh, what do you call it? You know, true modeler. Uh, and he's not been modeling that long. Uh, less, I think less than 10 years or right at 10 years. He's always been modeling. And he started off doing military and aircraft and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, he's always been a big drag, drag race fan, uh, uh like NHRA and all that. So top fuel. So he's, uh, you know, he finally broke down and wanted to build a replica of something, and then he just fell in love with the cars, and that's what he's been doing since. He's not a hot rod guy. He's, he's all race, whether it's circle track or, you know, uh, indie courses. He's not a NASCAR fan, but, he, you know, like Isma and uh, Trans Am types, even though those would be a, a typical car, he's just that type of race, uh, especially like F1, uh, you know, hypercars, supercars, stuff like that gets gets him going, but the hot rod thing is not his scene. But again, check him out, guys. Uh, again, you know, he's one, one of the guys that sponsored uh, some of the prizes. Uh, and, you know, there, there'll be probably more than that. And that's just a good way to get his name out on the products that he's making, uh, which is going to be a lot of photo etch. Uh, I get to see pretty much all of his designs before he puts them to the table. And, uh, you know, he, he's come up with some amazing stuff uh, that's really going to help the modeling community. But, yeah, he's making a set of pulleys for this truck. I just thought it'd just be a nice little addition. Uh, a little touch of detail underneath the hood. Not because we're not going crazy. It'll have plug wires and, and that. But a, a set of aluminum pulleys on there. Uh, this truck rocks a, a, a regular V8. It's probably a 302. Uh, I, I don't know. Again. You know, he's still never contacted me. So we're, we're going with the fact that it's a, a 302. Uh, you know, it's, it's built. It's not stock, of course. So there's not, just not a lot to put underneath the hood because I just don't know. I've only got one picture out of all the millions of pictures that got, cat's got on his page. It, there's none of the engine. So, you know, there's just, just not a lot there. Uh, it's in the, the stance, the tires and wheels and, you know, how the bed looks. Now, my bed does not look like his. I told you we'd have to alter and make some changes uh, from what his is, because his probably has a totally different frame on it. Uh, this one, we just had to make allowances for the, the C-notches. So, to me, I like this. So, I, I can comfortably build the truck this way. Plus, it gives us room because we have, you'll see here in a second, we have crates to put back here that we're going to put like fresh fruits and vegetables and uh, like stuff in bags. You know, we, the detail is is the whole whole thing. And we still got to drill our hole for the uh, fill, fill neck for the uh, fuel cell. And we'll get that up there. And then uh, once it's all stained and everything, then we can go ahead and put our cap on it and call that you know, good. Got a couple little places of touch up. Nothing major. Sucks that it happened, but you know, uh, matte black is hard to, uh, and even though, you know, it's right here, what we may do is, uh, we may mask off the wood real quick and we'll hit these areas with some sandpaper, sand them down and, uh, may respray 
I think that's what we're going to do because this is going to be visible so much I don't want that to be seen and that touching it up wouldn't make it any better. So yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll mask this off once it dries real good. We'll mask it off and then we'll uh, sand this all down real good and we'll just re-hit it with some paint. Uh, we got tape on it just to hold it together so we can get all this in place. We have the the kit bed part of it here. Uh, I wanted that as a, a firm foundation versus this thin balsa wood, uh, which raised our sides up a hair more, but we're about a sixteenth below the edge of the rail on both sides, so we're okay. You know, it's just, again, I haven't talked to him, so we don't know what the uh, real truck has and doesn't have, and, you know, from most of the point of view of the pictures, he's, uh, let me turn on some light. There we go. He is, uh, I don't think he's very private, but he's, uh, he doesn't put a lot of the other stuff of the truck on his website or his Instagram page, which is so to him. No big deal. So anyways, uh, over the past couple days, let me gently pull this out because we're going to explain a thing or two. So the fountain is all weathered. We, we speckle painted her. Uh, we did a, a, a medium gray base and then we did uh, a, a black and then a darker gray and then lighter gray and white to kind of resemble the marble. Uh, and, you know, she's got some areas of bird poop on her and but it all looks good. And then we got I hand cut each one of these tiles and then paint them that way. And they go all the way around. And up here in the top, we did the same thing, same design pattern. Uh, these I found this design off of the offline or online, uh, you know, Italian tiles. So they're pretty much true to nature, just not, you know, perfect. But then we glazed them just to protect them and give them that shiny, like a, a porcelain tile would have. Uh, we glazed the inside to make it even more waterproof. Uh, and then I dropped her and I broke her. Can you believe it? I broke it so bad that I'm like, oh, holy crap. What am I going to do now? Well, I, was, I got lucky and I got it glued back perfect. And then her leg was missing. You guys can see that. So I had to remake her leg and glue it in place and paint it to match, which you can't really tell. It looks good. Her foot was still in place, which really helped. Uh... And then we can we finished up the weathering and everything. And I did test it with water. And, it, you know, everything still comes out like it's supposed to. So we're good. But if you look in here, you can see there's some... And I drop it again. I'm destined to destroy this. Uh, there's some lighter grass. Where did I go? Oh, right here. Lighter grass. I did the first grass, or put this grass on first. And then I, I came back and I did it here. I was like, well, it's just too much. I want to wait till I get it in place that way I can properly put it. But we got a nice little mat going around it. You know, this thing leaks water and grass just grows up out of the cracks all the way around it. And it really looks the part, especially when it's sitting on the, uh, the base. But we got that done and we got this to protect her. So we're going to put this back on her because I will break it guaranteed again. Uh... We have been working on our canoe guy. Uh, I still I got to come back and do all the uh, mid-tones and all the highlights. We got a lot of them done. There we go. And uh, I need to get a coat of varnish on him too to protect him. And we got our canoe first coat on it. Uh, we got to come back with a second coat. But yeah, and then we'll do a bunch of wash on there to really pull out all the wood grain and everything else. And, you know, guys, this is nothing special. It's just a little side thing, something to do while I'm waiting for stuff to dry. Uh, our main thing is, here's one of the power boxes. Let's see, we got it weathered up, a little rusty and crusty. Uh, our meter bases, uh, we painted it white, and then we painted the details on there, and then we used clear resin. 
and went over to make it look like glass. And, you know, it's a little rusty and crusty. We painted the little locks on them. So, you know, we just got to run the pipes out of everything. Uh, the little crates I was talking about, we got those painted. Uh, there's two light colored ones. And then a dark colored one. And even though these chairs are a little bit too small, we're going to set them back in the corner like they'd be for a kid. Up on the balconies or wherever. Uh, no big deal. We got our uh, bench painted. You can see a stress crack in the center. Uh, it's weathered, ready to go. It'll get a little grass around the edges too from where it sits back in the shade and it stays damp. Uh, we got a few of our rail pieces painted. Uh, this one's for the main balcony and we did some chipping. It's going to be hard to see. There you go. Uh, you know, it's like a metal rail, steel rail underneath. So we we got some uh, chipping, some aging. Uh, we got a little more to do. Uh, put their steel, we'll put a little rust streaks underneath there and down it. Uh, our fire hydrant is all painted and it's just like a, a real one from Italia or Italy. Uh, found a picture and that's what I, you know, Ernest made this one. And that's what I painted it exactly like the picture. And it's really <laughs> almost dead nuts on. So we got that done. A lot of our little light fixtures, we got them wired now with the LEDs. Uh, some soda bottles. We got the labels painted on there. Caps painted. And we got two grape sodas and one orange soda. Got our... Red, red light wired and painted. Uh, what else we get done? What else? I like these. Uh, I just left them on the supports because the holes are in the top. They'll just run right up through there. So when I get ready to put these in place, then I'll put the LED in those. Uh, what else? Is that it? Oh. We got the two little kids that Ernest sent painted. Or it looks like she's taking a selfie. We're going to figure out maybe she's holding some balloons or something. Uh, so we got those painted. What else? Oh, we added some... Uh, Weathered look, more weathered look to the little roof. It's like where the metal metal or the finish on it's worn down, the steel shown through, and it's getting rusty. <coughs> so that is done now. I just got to build a little frame for it underneath, which is 10 minutes worth of work. Uh, all the rest of the stuff we got ready to go into primer. The other, the birds, the squirrels, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we got the rabbit cage still to assemble and paint and weather. So we'll get to that probably one day this week. Uh, and just to show you on the bed. Uh, we'll have the bed down, but you know, see the crates fit back there. So we're just going to, we'll use some air dry clay and we'll make like bananas and some apples and oranges and you know maybe some other fruit and some vegetables uh, to fill these crates up with and then one will have like maybe a brown paper bag in it uh, with something sticking out of it just the the tiny little details so yeah we got those painted and that's pretty much it I mean three days in we got a lot of little little details done we got uh, all the other, the stair rail is ready to get primered and then painted. That's going to be bronze, uh, just to kind of stay close to the real picture. You know, pretty much all the other handrail will be black. Uh, that one just kind of stood out. So it's, I, I'd say it's probably the owner that painted it. And, you know, that's just what we're going to go with. And it's going to be rusty and, you know, weathered in areas. So, uh, that's it. Oh, yeah, a couple cats. I got the base coat on them. We got a uh, yellow tabby and a black whatever. He's going to be white. White spots on him. And uh, 
this will have some white white on him as well garfield and uh you know he looks like our cat murphy so we'll see uh and we got some other cats coming and some mice from Ernest. so that'll can kind of complete all the animals that would be around on the diorama uh so other than that that's about it guys uh we'll get to our mail call here or not mail call stash ads uh and talk about this other little project get you set back up right here all right a drink and then we'll get you on your merry way so we went out to dinner to celebrate my daughter's birthday last night uh, and then everybody wanted to go to Ollie's. So I was like, oh, sure. I heard they had some kits. Uh, and they did. Not a lot. They had two different versions of the Batmobile. They had the Green Hornet. That was 132nd scale. I want the uh, 125th scale. Uh, they had this one. And they had a lot of military. Uh, tanks, ships, uh, and airplanes. You know. So uh, I needed a police car for the uh, Ghostbusters diorama. Actually, I need two. I've got one right here. Uh, this is the only one they had. So I've got one, now I need two, and then I gotta get decals made for New York Police Department to put, you know, on everything. Pretty much the same color, if I remember right. Or the cars were white with a blue door. I can't remember. Uh, we'll look up a police car of that era. Uh, but yeah. Uh, these will be curbside, uh, only because, you know, we're not, they're not the main focus. They're just part of the diorama. So we'll, uh, glue the hood shut, uh, and they'll play the part. We may open, like, one of the doors or something like that just for the looks of the diorama. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it. Just for a police officer to stand behind her, like, with a gun pointed up at the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. We still need, for that diorama, we need one more police car, like this. Uh, we need some 125th scale police officers. Uh, in the, uh, I need one kind of like with his hands out. Or actually two with their hands out, like pushing the crowd back. Uh, and then three, like two... Two standing and shooting towards the sky, and then one like down on their knees, aiming up. Uh, for the, the we're talking about the right side of the diorama. Uh, so uh, that would that's going to hold two police cars, uh, the, the uh, up police officers, and then I'll have a lot of these people I have back here for like civilians standing in the back uh, background, and then like a, a faux building right here. Very, just a small point of view is just going to be like the last 10 feet of the building. Uh, and then to the left of that will be Ecto-1, uh, the Ghostbuster standing in front of it, you know, with their blasters up towards Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And then, of course, Slimer. And then the, the, the uh, fire station for uh, Ghostbusters headquarters. And then part of the building next to it... Uh, it's going to be one of those single back, kind of like Cecilia, all the detail in the front, but no interior detail. We'll have it lit up on the inside, but there won't be no interior detail. It'll all be exterior detail. And then we need, a, I need a Pinto, uh, and then a uh, little Pinto hatchback, and then I need another car. I'm thinking from that era, the late 70s, early 80s, uh, of a station wagon of some sorts. I don't, I don't have nothing in mind. It can be any goofy looking, but of that era. Uh, and that's what I want to put on the left side of the street and parking spots in front of the uh, one, one place. Uh, so we'll have a total of one, two, three, four, five, five vehicles sitting on the diorama that all be towards the front and, and then all the people and of course the buildings are the backdrop and then Stay Puft Marshmallow Man's like in between the two buildings down the other street reaching up to where the beam is coming out of the top so yeah uh, it was a good find $12.99 you can't beat it 
you know, and we got one more piece of Ghostbusters that we need. Now we just need a, you know, a few other things that we'll, we'll kind of get more in depth on that as we go and get closer to that diorama. And then, uh, I'm a big fan of the movie, uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, was not alive, you know, but, uh, I found this one, Lannis Kit, uh, it's the Doolittle B-52, uh, this thing's 164 scale, and it was it, way overpriced if you ask me, but, you know, what do I know about planes? Yeah, 164 scale. It's a skill level two, uh, but it's just the right size where I can hang from the ceiling in here and not take up a lot of space, or I can put up on one of the shelves. Uh, I've always loved the B-52, or B-25 and B-52 bombers, uh, so it'll be a, a fun little build. Uh, I don't think it's that big. It's got some movable parts, the r rotating turrets, it's got the pilots, uh, the props move, uh, detailed landing gear, length is 10 inches, wingspan is 12 and 3 quarters inches, so I mean it's a foot wide, so you know, well, right about that, one's a foot, about that wide, and you know, 10 inches, about that long, so that's that's a good sized plane. Uh, once it's all assembled, I'm sure it'll be a pain in the butt. It's an Atlantis kit, but uh, we'll definitely get to this. I'm gonna have to get some uh, olive drab paint. I do have some. I have to look see how much I have. Uh, but you know, we'll paint it to resemble the box art. Make sure that red stripes there, the white underneath the belly, and the rest of the olive drab, and then we'll put all of our uh, decals on there and everything else so that was it guys that's all we got uh the side project uh now this is we did stock back up on our black and our white i love the layout this comes out flat the white is a flat also uh painting little detail parts now, I'm going to show you these, and you tell me if you can figure out what I'm doing. I mean, these are super tiny. Whoops. And in the grand scheme of things, it'll be just right. Uh, so there's part of it. How do you make your fuzzy dice, Rick? You get these. Uh, they usually have smaller packs, but I've... I bought mine like six years ago and I used up the last set. Six forty nine, and I, that's a lifetime supply. So what I do is I take and I coat, because these are engraved. So I coat over them and then I sand them down. And then I use a black marker or whatever color you're, you know, you're going for. And I, uh, after you prime them, and then I put my little marks on there or paint them it's better to paint them first but so whatever color you want them. uh so i you know i fill everything in i sand it down smooth i prime it i paint it and then i will put uh black dots to resemble like a dice uh if it's just a finished surface smooth surface now if they get flocked uh i go i come back afterwards and then I'll do the dots then. And I just use a rock, real fine point permanent marker. Uh, whatever you know, color you're going for. Uh, it's normally black. And then uh, I put my dots on there. And, and that makes a little fuzzy dice hanging from the windshield. So there's two clues. Fuzzy dice from the windshield. Tiny little beads. What are we going to do with that? We got this. Oops. And we drop it. And we got this real firm nylon string here. Now, of course, this is made for beads, but it's real, real stout. Uh, and that's what we need. So, you know, we've cut them into probably lengths of less than that, about that much. And a little red bead will go on there. And then I will paint it all. And those will all dry. And then we will dip them in glue. And we will dip them down in red flocking. 
So again, there's your third clue. What are we what are we building? What what kind of car are we building? It is a car. Uh, the kit is coming from Model Roundup. It is a new release. It's uh, a 1964. There's your fourth clue. And then we ordered a couple things from Iceman Collections to go with it. It goes in that 1964. There's your fifth, your fifth, uh, Teaser, and then sixth, uh, there's a parts pack that uh, 3D scale parts uh, on Instagram. I'm sure they're on other platforms. I only know them on Instagram, but they're they are called 3D scale parts. He makes a ton of stuff, all different scales. Uh, and that parts pack goes with this. So if you can guess what I'm going to be building, yeah, yeah, drop it down in the comments there. So we got a few scratch building things to do. We've got uh, pretty much everything comes between the kit and the parts pack that I'll need. Uh, and then we'll have to make this stuff. Uh, we got something else coming in the mail uh, that's going to help for the interior on that car. And uh, it's going to be a uh, secret birthday present for my uh, brother-in-law. He doesn't hardly watch my videos. He just doesn't have time. And even if he does, he doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about. So, uh, unless one of you guys get it right and put it down in the comments and he reads the comments, but I doubt that. And if so, it's not a big deal. It's not like super secret, top secret. Uh, but if you can guess what I'm going to be building, uh, yeah, throw it down there in the comments. Uh, it is a side project. Uh, again, his birthday's not till like November. So, you know, i got plenty of time to work on it. I don't foresee any problems because we're not modifying suspension. We're not modifying the body. We're not modifying the interior to the integrity that requires a lot of work. Uh, as far as putting stuff back together or reshaping. Uh, and the engine, we're not, you know, we'll plug wire it. We'll, uh, we'll add what details we can. Uh, make it a little spicy. The trunk opens on the kit. So we'll definitely go do all the trunk detail. And, uh, yeah, well, uh, I'll kind of give an update as we go on it. But, uh, it, again, if you can guess what it is, put it down in the comments. Uh, and as soon as it all gets here, we'll, we're going to get started on it. Uh, that will probably happen back here on one of these two benches. Because before I start anything new, uh, we're going to get these, these tables moved around. My shop cleaned really well. Start getting everything organized, put away. Uh organized over here get the rug back down the chair moved rearranging and and getting organized that's our key thing I, it's a train wreck in here but that's it guys uh friday's video is a no-go my wife's having a procedure done so we'll be at the hospital all day uh for that if i get a chance saturday i will uh get a video if not probably it'll be next monday so, until then, guys, you have a great weekend. Rest of your week. Uh, get some modeling in. Uh, always, my email's down below. You guys can send me pictures of what you're working on. I'd love to see it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put it in the comments or send me an email. Uh, the shop cards, I'm still waiting on uh, my niece. Uh, she's got them designed, uh, and I've seen the, the proof, and they're good. I just, she's just got to find a place to have them printed off. So this should be coming here fairly soon. Uh, what else? What else was there? Oh. Thank you to all my past, present, and future subscribers. Uh, you, know, you guys at this point are the only reason I do this. Uh, you faithful, faithful few. That pretty much watch every video and have from the beginning i thank you uh and, and this is this is why i do it i just i'm not gonna be doing it as often uh get more work done uh, i've got more work to do because the weather's breaking uh so there'll be less time in here so this time will be valuable so the more i can focus on building and getting stuff done 
the, the, the quicker we can start a new project because we got quite a few. Uh, it looks like honing down right now, uh, these, these two builds and this diorama and one Mustang is probably all I'm going to have done for Acme, but that's okay. It, it's less I got to worry about setting up and, uh, fooling with, uh, and you know, I'm, and I'm okay with that. So we will start our next projects as these get done. Shorty is really close. Six, about 60%, 70% done. Uh, Cecilia is about 50% done. The diorama is probably about 30%, 40%. Uh, so we got quite a bit to do on that. And then we got to pull down the 53. The other Mustang, we got to get the uh, Pro Street done. Uh, I'd like, if I can get it done and get it looking good, then it's going to come back to me too. So I'll have a total of four builds and then the diorama. Uh, and then, yeah, we've got the uh, 53. We've got the Challenger to get done. Uh, so, you know, the, kind of wrapping this up to October, we're pretty much pretty much booked up. Uh, so, till then, guys, this is Rusty Rotor. I'm out.